It's alive. It's a, I waited two months to say that. It's hey, Teresa. What's going on, everybody? All right. Everyone that's going on in that chat room, what's going on? Let me, we're going to get going here in a second. What I want from you guys first is who are you, where you're from, what you shoot, what you shoot with, and I want that chat room to look like a riot scene. I want to have a seizure from this chat room. All right? Let me know if you can hear me okay. Audio is five by five. I don't know what that means, but okay. Is that like 2020 vision? Let's turn on some lights. We waited four years for this, guys. We're live. Welcome, everybody. Whoop. To, hey. What's going on, everybody? We are live to YouTube, and welcome, everybody, to Adorama. This is uh, day one of the new event space. You guys are watching me on the new channel, Adorama Events. If you're just stumbling on this after I've gone live, Hit subscribe and the bell so you get notified when we go live because a lot of it's going to be happening multiple times a week uh, around 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, but some other stuff happening. I want to thank Ashley for being my model today. And really quickly, let's go through a tour of the six camera points for you guys at home. So you're looking at me on camera one, camera two, camera three, you guys all know from Daniel doing this. <laughs> Camera four, we're overhead. So if you guys want to see how the setup is happening or like, hey, Seth, how far is that light from Ashley? You can, you can see it and go, that's like three feet. The, uh, the newest camera, though, is this pr audio, pr uh, presenter perspective. So you guys are actually on live right now. Raise your hands. Everybody raise your hands. Human beings are here. I'm not alone anymore. It's amazing. They, they let me out of my cage, and I'm allowed to be around humanity again. So this is also going to be the perspective point when we move into our final little bit for Wednesday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Coffee with Creators is going to happen right here. You might have remembered it from uh, the lockdown days. Well, now we're going to be doing it in person with the stores, the background, with all sorts of uh, guests. And we'll get into that when that time is right. But the last camera point is right there. Everybody turn around and look right up in that corner. Everybody awkwardly point at that camera right there. There you go. Look at this. Great audience participation, everybody. You're awesome. Let me tell you. All right, cool. So that's what you guys are getting. And in the room, you guys are getting three 4K HDR screens, Sony Bravias, and an HT45, uh, HT4550i 4K DLP 4K P3 color space projector. Of course, my phone goes off. It's all right. And you guys are all doing exactly what you've always done, looking at me and quietly and awkwardly. It's great, let me tell you. So I'm gonna turn off your crowd light. I'm gonna turn off this overhead light so you guys can see the projector a little cleaner. I'm even gonna turn off this back, this back light over here so that you can see that a little bit better, okay? So we're in it now. First of all, this is one of my demos. So you know you're not sitting quiet. So what's the first thing we're gonna do today? On the count of three, everybody's gonna scream, and I mean it, all right? On the count of three. Ready, one, two, three, scream! <laughs> I, I, I need a different camera's perspective for that. One more time, everybody scream! <laughs> See what you're missing out, sitting at home? It's okay. All right, let's get into this a little bit. Uh, so remember, this is a channel you guys are gonna wanna stay up to while it's live. So if you guys are in the chat and you guys have questions, Hit a bunch of capital Q's first so I can grab it because I got them who have higher priority than you who's sitting home. I'm just saying they came out. I'm going to give them priority, all right? How many of you guys even know what this demo is about? Raise your hands. See, like people don't even know what they come to these things. Small strobe, right? So what's small strobe? What is small strobe? Are you guys kidding me? You just screamed. We broke the audio ice. There's speed lights, but we actually evolved. So it's funny. This is the very first demo I ever did here at Adorama 10 years ago. And I actually went back and watched every Speedlight demo I did, and it's amazing how much things have changed. Because Speedlights used to be this, right? Where we just got this flexible, malleable head that's camera mounted, it's always there, and we're good for it. But now we're looking at these like micro monolights, right? We're looking at stuff like this, like the A2, A10, or you can get other things like the Explorer 100 from Flashpoint, and some other things that are like soda can sized that are giving us what we were able to do with Speedlights off camera, right? but not so much on camera, right? There's no shoe on here talking to our, to our camera. So that's like the biggest differentiator. But there are a few other things. And how many of you guys hate speed lights? Raise your hands. 
You know, six years ago, everyone raised their hands. Now everybody's all good with the speed lights. It's amazing. Speed lights are this thing that I think people, um, actually, I know why that is, because now people like it on camera, blitzing out like a paparazzi shot, because they like that style, right? Hey, what's up, Moses? You wearing sunglasses? Are you that cool? <laughs> this is the first graduate of the Adderall event space, Moses, right? I'm very proud of this guy working hard out there. Yeah, clap for Moses, come on. This is a community, kids, and we stay up on what each other are doing. So when you guys come here, you guys all know each other, you see each other's work, you keep each other going. You're allowed to talk to each other. You're allowed to talk to each other. And in the comments, you can reply. You can be like, oh, I don't like speed lights. Well, actually, speed lights are great. And then give it, helps everybody. This really is, I gotta tell you, to, I'm actually gonna do this. This demo, the first demo, I'm dedicating to Daniel Norton, who's gonna come up here right now. Get up here, old man, come on. You guys know Dan Norton. This is the guy who started the original event space, but this is the guy who taught me about community. I always thought this was like cutthroat, battle for jobs, elbow in the other guy's face, kill everybody and start shooting. Mm -hmm. And you're like, actually, you should kind of talk to some other people. And it changed a lot. I, so I was, I was tricking him so I could steal his clients. He just wanted a day off and he made me do a class in here. So he'd go, I think he went to like the mountains or something. Yeah. But it's true. And you guys can help each other instead of being trolling each other. You can kind of elevate, share work. We have an Adorama Discord, adorama.com slash discord. And boop, look at that. Hey, uh, QR code for you guys to go to Adorama events and stay up on all the events. You like that? Stand it with your phone. Say what's up. Three, two, one. It's gone. That's yeah, man. I, I need that. Can you get that for me? It's called a QR code, Dan. It's called the QR I'll, code. I'll, I'll look it up. Okay. <laughs> but for real, guys, I think uh, it's, it, this is important. Right? I think a lot of you haven't even seen each other since the last events, all right? So shoot together, go on photo walks together, share work. You're not gonna get better in a vacuum, I promise you that. And things that you can buy aren't gonna make you better, but they're gonna open up options for you. Hopefully what we do tonight is gonna give you guys an idea of what you can do with what you, you have in your hands and what you need to build on, okay? Speed lights are, are special to me because these are one of the first types of lighting you're ever gonna own or get into. Right? You, no one buys a camera and a lens and goes, you know what, I need a power pack with like three heads and a, and a mortgage. Right? Like it's, it's crazy to start thinking you're building a studio. But you will start out like this when you're that guy at that wedding who your cousin asked to shoot that time. Right? And then you go, I really don't like the way this looks. Why? What is it that you don't like about it? Is it, is it really a horrible way to shoot or is it a style that you might not resonate with? Right? So how many guys have speed lights? Let the record show everyone's raising their hands. So, <laughs> I'm not changing cameras, okay, guys? <laughs> Here. There, nah, whatever. You know, leave me alone. Can I just shoot something, man? All right, so, so as this is a demo, you guys know exactly how we start this properly and not lazy like me and Dan really shoot. What's the, what's the, first, way, what's the first thing we got to do? Black frame. Black frame. Elizabeth's got it. Where were you on that one? <laughs> What's going on, kid? You want to face me over here? All right, so Ashley, who, by the way, uh, I shot for a video that's coming out this month. Be on the look for that on Adorama TV, the other channel. Uh, I'm very psyched on this because her eyes have this crazy texture. You're going to see it all. Um, plus, I'm very proud of her. She owns two salons, and I'm very excited that this woman has become... I shot her makeup portfolio like 12 years ago when she was like this big. I'm so proud of you. All right. Yeah! Yeah. So the first thing we gotta do is a black frame. What is a black frame? Cool. Black frame, we're gonna get our settings in our camera to a point where no, no uh, ambient light affects our shot. Why? Well, in this situation, I wanna create all the light and know what I'm documenting. Here's the thing though. When you guys are using speed lights, a lot of the time you're mixing it with ambient light, right? So in that case, what you're gonna do is not go for the black frame, but in here, I'm not mixing this in. And if you're using small strobe in a studio type way, you're gonna kinda wanna go in that direction. So even if you're at like a trade show and you're trying to just grab portraits of people, the lights are 10 light years away, you're at ISO 1000, why? Dial it back to 100, create your light, make it cleaner, no noise, really sculpt, make the light that you want. Better color, better skin tone, right? Because you are using cleaner, quote unquote cleaner light. How many times have you guys been at the Javits Center, which no one really needs to go to ever, <laughs> except for Comic-Con? 
How many of you guys have been there and gone like, man, everyone looks green? Or man, like it's so overhead and there's just tons of drop shadows, right? You know, I know, I know, you, I know, I know. You go to the cosplay and you're like, oh, Rogue, can you stand like this? And she looks like junk and you don't know why. It's because you're not refining the light. And that's really what a speed light's gonna do is when you're using the ambient light, you're using this in conjunction to clean up that light, okay? But today, we're building a studio out of nowhere. That's kind of where I'm leaning on this, okay? And a lot of times, people think speed lights are underpowered. How many of you guys, th <clears throat> how many of you guys think speed lights are underpowered? See, years ago, everybody thought speed lights had no power. You guys are using them more. You're seeing what's happening. The reality is, even if you have like a 200 watt second light, 400 watt second light, and if you're using it at a quarter, hey, Jose, what's up, man? Yo, you all right? You good? Oh, man, this is awesome. Where was I? Oh, yeah, if sometimes you have like a 400 watt second light, 600 watt second light, and you're only using it at a 30 second of a power, you're not even coming close to the potential of that light anyway. So when you're using a speed light, you're kind of in the 75 watt second range, give or take. So if you, you're not really having to stress it out. Let's get into this, all right? I'm gonna start shooting at ISO 100, why? Come on. Basic ISO. Lowest ISO in my normal range, right? I'm gonna get as much out of my uh, sensor as I can, not, no noise, and uh, as much detail as possible. What happened to the community? I know, Vic, I know, believe me. This, yes, this is a reflector. I use the shirt as a reflector all the time. Maybe we'll use it tonight. I don't know. I did make special reflectors for you guys. I was on the roof spray painting this chrome. So it's, we're going to get into that as well. Also, I painted this truss. We painted the wall. You have no idea how from bare bones this whole, this whole space came to. ISO 100. I'm going to shoot at 200th of a second. Why? Because on a Z9, that is the flash sync. That is the fastest shutter speed I can go before going into high speed sync. I'm not going to go into high speed sync. Why? Oh, I thought you were a photographer. I'm sorry. I thought I was talking to a bunch of photographers. I'm sorry. How many guys lean on high speed sync like crazy? Oh, what's that? Is that a Z9? What's high speed sync? High speed sync will. Uh, uh huh. <laughs> will overpower the fun, sun right? if you want to shoot at 1.2. High speed sync is a mode in which we really stress out our strobe. We run into a lot of issues though. Anything you do in photo to get some result is a trade off. You want to freeze action? Faster shutter. Faster shutter, I lose light. Do I have to raise my ISO then? Getting a little bit of noise. Everything's a trade off. Same thing with strobe. If I max out the power on this, slow recycle time. Could color shift if it's getting overheated. Battery drains faster. Everything's a trade off. Nothing's a golden ticket. No matter what preset they sold you, nothing's a golden ticket. Okay? Including any type of gear, right? It's just going to get you. You have to look at the properties of that gear and does it get you where you want to go? High speed sync. It's going to pulsate. It's going to boost up the power totally and just pulse. And that's going to make longer flash durations. You could have motion blur if you're not doing faster sh enough shutter. You're going to have shorter battery life, longer recycling times because it's beating up that strobe so much. And just the life of the strobe in general. If you're going, if you're throwing nitrous through an engine nonstop, what do you think is going to happen to that car if you didn't do that for those years, right? Same thing, all right? We don't have to do that. We're controlling the scene. High speed sync is really good in one really distinct they're gonna kill me online for this one and I don't care, you can hate me in the comments, it'll help my algorithm. In one distinct setting, if I wanted to shoot Ashley out in the open light, I wanted really shallow depth of field, I'm at 1.2, I'm letting a ton of light in, I'm gonna blow out that background because of the ambient light. Well, if I speed up that shutter, it'll take down that ambient light, but we might go up to 4,000th of a second. That's where high speed sync kicks in. So that's kind of like my main reason for going to high speed sync. All right, I am talking way too much as per usual. Let's do, so now here's where we make our choice on creativity, right? What do I want to do for an aperture? Well, I don't want to shoot like wide open. I don't need to make only an eyeliner, like the line of our eye in focus. Like I'm not into that. We're going to shoot at around, I don't know, 6.3 and see what we get. All right, this is a mirrorless camera, so I can already tell you it's going to be black. But let's take the shot so everyone at home and you guys can see what's going on. I'm going to, whoop. Tell me I'm on raw, by the way. I didn't even check my settings. Okay, so you guys are looking at this at home. A little bit of her is showing up in, the, in her bright blue dress. I thought it was gray when she sent me pictures of it. It's blue. But if we open up that, the exposure a little bit, she looks thrilled to be here, number one. And we're looking at about two stops till we start seeing something significant. So what does this tell me? It tells me a lot. It tells me that's the, de the deepest my shadows are gonna get, because what's a shadow? 
No light. If there's absence of light, and that is without any light that I'm recording, come on, without any light I'm recording, then that's what's expected as, as my shadow line. Why am I shooting JPEG and RAW? What is this amateur hour stuff? And why? Wow, I should have really checked this stuff out. All right, cool. Any questions so far? All right, so let's start shooting her where she hates me for making a bad photo so that at the end you guys see a bad photo and a good photo you think you actually went to a good demo. So you're going to love this part. I'm going to load on an on-camera strobe. This is a Pro Photo A10. It's not about what this strobe is. If you guys are in Flashpoint, there's a million options in Flashpoint. I personally recommend the, the lights that have lithium ion rechargeable because double A's are going to take you a little longer to recycle. They're, you're going to eat up a lot of money over the year using them. A lot of waste we don't need to make. So I, I rec it's, it's, it's a little bit more money, but you're going to save in the long run and you're going to get better performance. So check out the lithium ion, oh my gosh, R2. I'm not sure what it's called. Lithium ion zoom, three. Yes, jeez, all these names. All right, so we're going to go into TTL. What's TTL? Through the lens. Through the lens of what? You guys aren't completing your sentence. Metering. TTL is TTLM. TTL metering, because what actually, do, do you guys need me to go into what TTL is? Raise your hands. All right, all right, okay. It's okay, listen, this is where we're allowed to say, because I guarantee you there's a guy in here that's going like, I know everything. Oh, I didn't know. I, I'm glad I didn't, you know, I'm telling you. There's a lot of egos. Yeah, I know, I know you're here. Don't worry about it. A lot of... <laughs> I can feel the testosterone waving in my direction. <laughs> Look at this man. Um, so TTL is basically having a light meter built in, right? Because we're using the meter in our camera instead of going up to Ashley and metering with a meter, which is an instant meter. There's a bit more accuracy in one over the other as far as light falling on them rather than what's reflecting off of them. But the way TTL works is we take a shot of Ashley. If you were to do this in super slow motion, before the shot's even taken by the camera, there's milliseconds where the flash will take a pre-measured amount of light and chuck it. And then it's going to go to the camera and be like, okay, so you're at this f-stop, this ISO, then I got to be at this power. It's going to fluctuate the power based on your settings to stay in your exposure. The power of your light is not your exposure. Everyone say that. I'm really glad you guys have joined. This is the first step to help. I really like it. <laughs> it's true, though, because you're really fluctuating that power to get you to exposure. If I'm shooting at 6.3, that light's going to go up and down based on how close or how far, what modifiers I use. All sorts of things are going to change on that light, but I'm going to stay constant. The exposure is your camera, what you're setting it at. The light is just trying to stay with you. When you go, ah, oh, I don't know, like, no, it's not the light. Like, calm down, like, breathe for a second. It's, the light is just going to fluctuate to stay with you. What's going on, Usher? Look at that guy. Yeah, look at this guy. Look at this guy. I like that we know everybody. You know, there's, pick a place in New York that has something like this for nerds. Give me a break. What, are you going to go to Barnes & Noble and sit there lonely? Yeah. All right. You know exactly what I'm talking about, too. Any questions so far? Hey, Josh, what's going on, man? Thanks for jumping in the chat. I appreciate it. Let's take a detail shot. So this is on camera straight up, right? Boop. Am I on TTL? All right, beautiful, love it, amazing. If I was under 23 years old, I'd say that's the best shot in the world, right? Because that's what's going on right now, right? You're going to say it's a horrible shot, but I'm telling you, it's on exposure. Look, look, there's detail in the highlights, detail in my shadow, right? Look, even in the shadow in her hair, there's detail. She's pasty as hell. Look at this. She's got... <laughs> look, we got detail everywhere. You know I love you. Come on. You know I love you. Come on. All right. So TTL did its job. Steve Robinson, a legend. What's up, man? You're support, you, man. Love you, bro. Steve Robinson was a huge help in troubleshooting some tech. I had issues building the space. I want to thank him publicly, and I love this guy. Thank you, guys. So this didn't do a bad job. It did its job measuring the light. What you don't might not like, unless you're like, 16 right now, you might not like the style. So what's wrong with the style? Well, for one, it's hard. It's a very hard, impacting light. Now, a lot of people kind of like this right now because you can blow out some textures in people, and a lot of people are shooting more like this, and they're doing that to mitigate shadow cast. It's more straightforward, like a ring light. Have you ever noticed since the pandemic, everyone in the world loves ring lights now? 
Yeah, right? You go on that Zoom call and everybody's got those reflections in their glasses and you're like, you really don't look that good, bro. I don't, it's like they're just nostrils and eyes and you're like, great, <laughs> beautiful. But that's really what's kind of happening, right? You get that kind of effect. Here, it's just a very small light source. What affects hard and soft? What? Distance. Not distance. Size. Size. Size is a, is a side effect from distance, right? A three-foot octa against Ashley's face is three feet. A three-foot octa on the other side of the store is a dot. It's going to get pretty hard if you got enough power, right? Well, this is the size of this light, right? This is only a few inches. Look at the size of her face, man. <laughs> right? I got love you. Come on. You know, <laughs> I got enough. I love you. I know. So it's never going to be softer. It's never. If you're not going to be able to make it bigger, it's not going to get softer. But what you can do is what you all know what I'm going to do, which is bounce it, right? And what does bouncing it do? Makes it bigger because, because whatever I bounce it off of becomes my light source. If I, I'm not going to bounce it off of a 12-foot ceiling and lose it. I'm, I'm not even going to make it. All right? I probably could if I was at 1.2, though, right? More light in at once, I probably could do it. But we're not going to do that. I'm going to cheat my brains out. You know why? Because I built this space, and I'm doing my demo how I want. All right? So I'm doing, thank you. <laughs> thank you. This is $3 in board. You can get this anywhere except here for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Um, and just for argument's sake, we're going to see what happens when we do this. So this becomes my light source, right? If this was neon red, the light would become neon red. So that becomes your light source. So all those trolls online that go, no, you tell them to shut up, you start a war, you dox them, and then you just go on shooting, OK? <laughs> Let's do this. Because I want to get into like off-camera flash. Any questions so far? Anything, any of this helpful so far? I know we're slow start, but you know how it goes with me. We're going to go down a rabbit hole fast. Hey, Mackie, thanks for the speakers, man. You guys are hearing me on Mackie speakers right now. I want to thank Mackie for supporting it. <laughs> While we're doing that, I want to thank Nikon for the cameras and lenses, Smaller for the cages, Avenger Man Photo for all the grip, all the lights from Nanlite, Sennheiser for the mics you guys are hearing me on, G Raids uh, Sandus for all the backup support for all the stuff we're recording right now, and oh, Ben Q for the projector. And uh, whoever's feeding me coffee right now, mom. everything. Mom. Listen, I had my mom as my last model. She got thanked enough. No, I'm just kidding. If you're in the chat, mom, I love you. I'm not kidding. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, ready? All right, so we're not going to go like this. Why? Drop shadows, right? Directional light still holds, right? If, is this going to make it any better, or is this going to make it any better, right? Because the farther away I hold it, the more coverage we get on our, sub, on our, on our substrate, right? And we're going to go from here into a super soft setup pretty quick. All right, let me get some distance on this. So, chin down a little bit, tell like this a little bit. Yeah, beautiful. Wow, that happened pretty fast, right? So, did I change anything? Was that a slow, weird clap? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Look how much softer it got, right? She got way more annoyed, which happens when you bounce flash. But also, look what happened here. Look how much glitter we lost on her, right? Every choice you make affects something else. So if you're a fashion photographer, you usually want to go with a harder light to show every thread, every detail in that jacket. But you might light hard for the outfit and soft for the face. Or you might light hard for everything and just watch where you move your model's face so that the shadows align where you want. If you haven't noticed, every other shot in fashion or beauty is like this, right? Nostril, nostril, nostril. Yeah, they're looking for the light. Tyra Banks in the, in, in the early 2000s, look for your light. It's like, that's what they're doing. They're just trying to not have a no shadow sundial across. And that's kind of what, that's also part of it. Moving your model is the same as moving your light. Makes sense, right? Changing the angle. Everybody with me so far? Also, look at this girl's eyes. Look at this. Bananas, right? <laughs> However, see how she's pretty dilated? That's a, that is a byproduct of speed lights. No modeling light. We're shooting in a dark environment. Her eyes are opening up. So when you see a shot from somebody and they're dilated, it's usually an indication that there's no light in the, in the ambient and there's probably no modeling light going on. We can change that, though. Although, look at this. You can see this guy with his shirt, and that's the board reflecting the light, right? I'm going to try the silver side because I haven't shot with these reflectors. They're, they're fresh off the roof. I mean, they really, it's like the chrome spray paint still going. Let's see what the silver does. Any questions? All right. Let's see. Uh, let's do it like this. 
got harder, got way harder, punchier, snappier. But the TTL isn't wrong. She's got skin texture. It's just a different style of light. And you got to kind of pick what you want to go with on that. All right. So on camera, you're really kind of in a box. You're either going to lean into the style of that on camera light or you're going to find a ways to cheat it by bouncing it around where you go. Yes, they make soft boxes, but if they're only like eight inches and you're stepping back six feet, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to get a diffused light, which means less specular highlights, oily skin, maybe glasses, things like that get, get mitigated a little better. But you will end up uh, still having a harder shadow pattern. And shadow patterns, I mean, you can really see like under her lip, see how three-dimensional her lip gets? Whoop. No lip shadow at all, right? So we're really changing Ashley's shape of face by changing the pattern of, look how three-dimensional her lips get, right? So you are definitely changing perception of your subject. And this is kind of why people like that hardcore paparazzi look. Another reason is kind of psychological. They like to have that candid, unpolished look. It worked for American Apparel forever, right? You know, it's a little more honest. Doesn't look so messed with. You're getting what you got. So maybe that's kind of part of it for some people. They want that 1993 bar mitzvah photo. You know what I mean? I mean, some of us have had that bar mitzvah photo, others, but yeah. All right. Let's, let's go into, any questions? What lens am I using? 24 to 120 F4. This is one of my favorite lenses. It's one of the only, uh, Nikon's the only one that makes this lens, honestly. Uh, but it's close focusing. Is, actually, you guys are watching me on it right now. It's close focusing is under a foot. So at 120, you can still step close, make it look shallow, and almost get like a pseudo macro. Not real macro, but pseudo macro. And I, I really am impressed with this lens. So if you're in the Nikon system, maybe check out the 24 to 120 f4. Um, I don't, again, I don't, I don't care what you guys buy. I don't. I just want you guys to shoot, OK? If you're into a brand, go for it, all right? Any questions? Everybody's good? Everybody's good. No, I need you guys to ask questions so I eat up time so I can get out of here alive. I have no plan here. All right, let's, let's start taking this off camera because I think that's where things get a little more exciting. Now, part of the thing about speed lights, what's an advantage of speed? And I'm not just saying, when I say speed lights, I also mean like these little mono lights. These are about a 100 watt second light. You're not really going to notice that much of a difference. What you will notice is maybe it recycles like a little bit faster. Maybe it's there for you a little sooner. Um, can mitigate heat a little better. Uh, but I mean, I love, I love this light. I, I mean, I've beaten the hell out of this thing since it's been, I did the, ba this is, one of these is a prototype and it's still going. So if you guys saw my video on Adorama TV, check out Adorama TV, Seth Marina A2. And I got a promo. So what I like about this thing is that this is it. And this A2 takes the same battery as my A10 speed light. So I'm all in the same system and I can mix and match. And what I really like is even if you're not in this system, if you're in Flashpoint with the Explorer 100, you can modify them to handle any size uh, normal uh, modifier you want, like three foot octaves, whatever, beauty dishes. You can just click it in and go and you're good, right? This is magnetic. That's a thousand dollar light. But it's, and believe me, when this came out, I was like, I'm not doing that. And I was like, oh, it works. So if it hits the floor, yeah, it'll be all right. All right, let's, um, let's take a strobe off camera, yeah? Let's do it. I'm going to show you, if you're at home and you don't have minimal gear, this is a really easy setup for you guys. One of the biggest advantages of small strobe is what? What's one of the biggest advantages? Portability. Portability. I can carry more at one time. <clears throat> I can carry more at one time. And if you guys know any of the stuff I shoot, you know I'm big on this light's lighting that, this light's lighting that. I like, I like a lot of little lights and really sculpt out what I'm going to do. And because I'm a disciple of Joe McNally, I mean, what am I going to say? That's what... I was raised on, right? Um, what's really cool is Manfrotto makes this, which we're going to use in two seconds once I, once I, I set this up, because I want you guys to see how portable this can get. And just so you know, there's a lot of options out there that you can build a studio on the fly. So out of this, oh my gosh, <laughs> you bored yet? So out of, out of this case, this, this is a carry-on case, I have two stands. These are Matthew Mini extendable reverse stands and they fit in carry-on luggage, and they, they will get you 
a pretty decent stand out of nothing. Am I putting a two, am I putting a 500 watt second light on this? No. Am I putting a speed light on it? Sure. Why not? If you're doing something with just some quick umbrellas, why not? Right? There's a lot of umbrellas out there that let you do a lot of things. So, see I told you I wasn't prepared guys, I told you. I don't know why you expected anything from me tonight. Okay, I'm gonna throw just a quick shoot through umbrella. What I wanna do in this, I watched back all my old speed light demos and a lot of them were like DIY materials and stuff. Oh, we totally gotta do that, huh? You guys wanna do the balloon bag thing tonight? Pizza boxes a little bit? All right, let's take a vote. Do you guys want something practical first or do you want something cool? <laughs> All right, I tell you what. I tell you what, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this the weird way. All right, we're gonna take a, I'm gonna prove to you that it's not about what you're buying for your lights. We just have to make them what to be softer. Bigger, bigger, right? What does it take to do a bigger light? Oh my God, there's too many stands. I feel like I'm in a forest. Hang on. Okay, let's do this. I'm just gonna take this adapter and throw it on a stand. Magnetize this. Oh, it's, it's so weird that nothing snaps in. It freaks me out. I'm like, oh, let me click something. It just, uh, the, I love how the greatest technology we have today is magnets. Everything's going magnetic. And that's because electronics have gotten so good they're not affected by magnets anymore. How weird is that? We're actually going backwards to this like caveman technology of uh, 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 like. <laughs> what, what's that symbol? What's, keep, I'm going, stop. Look, man, I just spent two months building this. I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with this demo, okay guys? Is that okay? Because Fernando wants me to hate my life, apparently. I'm looking at him back there. All right, so we're going to put this in group A. Do, we, do you guys need me to go into groups and channels and what that's about? Anybody? Groups and channels? We're good? All right, we're around some photographers tonight. This is amazing. If you don't know, channel is the entire setup. Groups are the individual or groups of lights I want to put underneath that channel. So let's do a classic overhead. And I got this modeling light, which we all have now. This wasn't a thing we had. Speed lights didn't have this. For anyone who complains to me about gear or cries that something doesn't do something, they read their thoughts, you shouldn't be shooting. This is amazing the time we live in and anybody complaining about gear, I don't care what price bracket, you're bananas, all right? I want you to know that, it's you. You're the problem, say I'm the problem. <laughs> say it, say I'm the problem. <laughs> there you go. Is that so hard? Jeez. It's true, they're the problem, what do you want? All right, I need to put a trigger on my move. I can use the speed light as the trigger. Yo, what's going on, Martha? What's up, man? How are you? You all right? My man from Roscoe back there. If you guys have any questions about gels or any other, um, what do you call those? The, the little joints? Uh, the, dash. the dash. The dash. The dash lights. I'm going to go into group A for this thing. I'm going to do a quick TTL and we're going to have a nice hard light, which we know what that's going to look like, right? Let's take a look. Super crazy blown out. Crazy blown out, right? Jeez. Did this fire? Yes. Okay. Let's try this again without this firing. That might be good. <laughs> hey, it's more on exposure. Who would have thought, right? So super hard, we get that amazing texture out of our eyes. We're not going that soft. Now I can keep this hard light and I can throw in a nice hard bounce and really keep the whole look, right? Really, really snappy, really, really punchy, very evening look, right? right? And I mean, we keep all that texture. Unbelievable. Actually, I want to try with the white side. Am I not tethered? Oh, no, that is tethered. Hang on. Okay. Really, really clean, guys. And even, even when you think it's blown out, look, there's texture right there, right in that sheet, right? It's there. I don't know, I kind of like this hard light now. I don't know if I want to change it to soft light. I mean, I'm just saying. However, we can do that, right? Because this is a demo and Seth has to do stuff. So, you know what I, guys, I got for you guys. 
Any questions, by the way, while I'm fumbling around? No? No questions? If I could bring one go-to thing on my shoe, what would it be? I'm going to show it to you in a couple setups. you got to be kidding me. Did I just lose? Oh, woo, Seth. Seth, you should have... I should have done a, a janky demo without you guys. All right, so we need this light to be bigger. We also need this light to be what else? What do you think else we need? Soft. Not just soft, what else? Come on, starts with a D, come on guys. Diffuse, diffuse. what's diffusion gonna do? Diffusion's gonna break up that light. Think of diffused as like a mist, right? Hard light, stream, be like water, right? Mist will let me take away that specular highlight. When you guys see shiny spots on somebody, that means something is reflecting directly back at your camera, like glasses, right? All that kind of stuff. If you guys are shooting product and you're seeing like reflection in a bottle, it's getting the reflection of the light coming back. That's really what it is. So, oh God. <laughs> I get, this is Brooklyn Dollar Store Musk. It's this new cologne I'm perfecting. So we're gonna do a Brooklyn softbox. This is a dollar store balloon, white for the most part. I got you blue polka dots because I thought it would be like a very Ashley thing. Then we go to the finest bodegas on, our t on the top of a hill past the little known alleyway. It's a special, it's a special place. You wanna make sure it's white or clear. I like the white because I think it's a better diffusion. Every bodega has a cat. How do they get rid of rats if they don't have a cat? How is a bodega gonna get rid of any rats if they don't have a cat? All right. What's gonna happen here? Well, one, what just became my light? The balloon, right? What just, what's something I'm gonna have to deal with? Two things I'm gonna have to deal with. Three things I have to deal with. Heat. <laughs> <laughs> Heat, temperature. color temperature. It's white, isn't always white. A lot of times it'll go warmer. And a lot of boxes out there, their temperature is based on that brand's, their spec, right? I find Lasto Light goes a little warmer. But I know that every Lasto Light, not Lasto Light, I'm sorry, Manfrotto, Lasto Light's gone now. Manfrotto. I know that Manfrotto, every one of their diffusion goes a little bit warmer. Let's go see what happens. I'm talking too much. We're going to do TTL. What else happens though if I got something in front of my light? Lose, Lose what? Power. What? Power. Light Power. You say, you're, you're looking at me like, what? Don't you know? I know. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to say it, you mook. Come on. Jeez. Dan, did you raise these people in this event space? Is this what I got to deal with? All right, no fill light. If you noticed, I raised the light up. So the light being covered eats up light. The light moving farther away eats up light. Right now, this is at six on there, based on TTL. It's probably gonna jump up to eight somewhere. So we're gonna take a guess, I don't know, eight maybe. Beautiful. Look at how quickly that just changed. See, your skin got warmer, right? We might even like that. I think it could go a little bit harder. So I'm gonna take it out of TTL, and it went up to eight. So I'm gonna give it half a stop more because I want it. I don't care what you want, Ken, okay? Let's take a look. Yeah, that looks cleaner to me. And <coughs> piece de la distance, a nice piece of foam core, right? Oh wait, what am I doing? Oh, what is this garbage? Oh, I'm sorry, you guys, I totally forgot. I totally forgot. We have these special pizza boxes. The real Brooklyn reflector. So. So this is a pizza box, but there's a secret to it, which we custom made with a nice silver bounce on the inside. Hi. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> What's up? Pizza this pizza costs more. <laughs> this pizza cost my entire career. So, you know, um, these are still in beta. Little notes going back and forth. You think I'm joking, but I gave them a list of notes that I want to do on these. So keep watch. But if you don't have this, because none of you have this, because you just, you just don't, you're not cool enough. You can get 
straight up pizza box, but listen to me, you're gonna wanna get clayboard. All right, the white cardboard is matte. And this goes for any type of bounce. So look for, it has this pearlescence to it. In fact, let's just go for it. Pizza box, Ashley's amazing face, a balloon. So that's the, basically a speed light, a balloon in a bag, and a pizza box. What did we do here? We applied principle. We made the light what? Come on! All right, everybody's gonna scream or I'll walk out of here. I'm not taking another shot. One, two, three, scream! God, unbelievable. <laughs> what did we do here? We made the light what? Larger. Larger, larger which does what? Softer. Softer. And we did what? Created artists. She is a work of art. Look at her. Look at this woman. Diffused it. Broke up that specularity because remember we were shooting super hard before. Look how I mean that's and that's on exposure. She's just all eyes. However, you might like. Oh, am I not showing you guys? You might like that one on the left. You might like that over dolled out dreamy skin. You know that really kick light. You might like that. Neither one of these are wrong. Neither one of them are right. But I'll tell you right now that exposure's on, son. That's, <laughs> you know what I mean? You technical is where you can go wrong. If you're trying to do something and not achieving that technical, that's where it goes wrong. Concept, style, feel, that's you guys. This is a science as much as it's a feel. You feel me? So you, can't, you might not like the way someone shoots, like Dan Norton's style is way outdated, but I respect it. <laughs> By the way, Dan's going live here Thursday, 5 p.m., shooting with constant lights, so we want to hang out for that. Uh, if you want to learn some old school techniques, I, I, I love you, Dan. I love you, Dan. <laughs> Dan's always changing, and I got to give him credit for that. He's always, he always wants to see something interesting, so he's never afraid to try something, even if he thinks it might not work out. And that's how you all should be. Don't be going, ah, it might look ugly. Fine, take the next shot. Are you going anywhere? No. See? <laughs> you paid for every pixel. Use them. Why not? If you shoot in film, you're probably a, a rich kid anyway, so... Enjoy it. Dude, it's like $18 a roll and like $30, $40 to process. Like, give me a break. And you're going to scan it anyway. All right. I don't know if there's any questions online. If you guys do have a question, put a bunch of cues first so I can catch it. So now, what I want to give you guys is like an, a practical setup that you can use with these principles, right? So if you have a... Oh, my God. I, I made a mess here. If you guys have, I did the whole demo last time with the balloon bag, but I don't think I'm going to do that this time. I really want to let you guys leave here with a couple things you can really take. We're going to do three setups that I think you guys can all use, especially if you do something like um, heavy volume portraits at like an event. Okay, so this isn't this setup is going to be more for small home, clean shots. Someone needs a headshot, and you got to pay your rent next week. This is what we're going to do. Okay, so first thing we got to do. Is we know what this light looks hard, right? R raw, right? Whew. Man, I gotta tell you, I totally forgot what it's like to talk every step you do something. See, I gotta do Dan Norton style where he pretends like he doesn't know what he's doing for a bit so I can catch my breath, you know? I love you, Dan. Dan, I'll be honest with you though, Dan is, has got more stuff that he doesn't even realize he's relaying to you while he's talking to you. You have to go to everything while he's live and you're gonna pick up things he's not even realized he's giving you. And that's, that's the beauty of a Dan Norton demo to me is, is this like crazy guru joint. All right, I just happen to have this. I know, shocking, I know, it's so convenient, guys. It's like so convenient. So I'm gonna put this into the C-stand. For everybody that doesn't know how to use a C-stand. <laughs> Everyone doesn't know how to use a C-stand. Remember, if you extended the arm, you're gonna put the arm over your tall leg. Little knobs left, big knobs right, your tall leg that way. If you keep that in mind, you'll be fine because what you want to do is when you're putting weight on this, you want to make sure this is tightening, not loosening, right? You don't want to kill a model because then I got to find another one of her. Look at her. I can't, look at that. I can't find another one of this. I mean, I could try, but to put a reflector in here, we're going to open up our knuckle. We're not going to put it in the bite here. That's for things that have rods in them, circle reflectors, things like that. This is gonna go in the flattest part and we, so that we don't destroy our boards. Like Dan destroys my boards every day. 
this is going to go, actually, first of all, I'm going to throw my sandbag on the high leg. We don't want that sandbag touching the ground. Why? Because then the ground's holding it. You want all that weight on that, on that C stand, all right? We're going to boost this up into the sky. And what did I just make? A pretty low ceiling. If you don't have a C stand, you can find a million ways to grip a third of a pound of board easily. Low ceilings are your friend here, right? You know, eight foot ceilings, great. You got, you're saving money on that third bedroom, I got you, I know. But now, we're gonna take this and point it back out here. So now, we got a nice bounce going on here. I think we're a little bit too far. I think we're gonna, if we're too far, using a lower powered light, we're gonna run into issues, right? You're already working with a light that's considerable less power potentially than a studio strobe. You wanna exploit it. So give it every cheat you can. A little bit more open on that aperture. Maybe ISO 200 instead of 100. I know, oh, I know. Calm down. I, get, I promise you your modern camera's gonna be fine. And you're also gonna wanna keep your lights closer to just out of frame so you're getting the most out of those lights. Remember, once they're maxed out, they're maxed out. That's where you gotta start figuring some things out. But if you give it the fighting chance, you're in it. Shoot, 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 shoot. And if you're maxed out, you're shooting slower. Recycle time slows down. You're missing that shot. The next shot's a little underexposed. Give yourself a fighting chance here. So a while ago, Moses said, what was the one thing you would bring if you could only bring one thing? And this is that one thing. And this is the thing that's changed, I think, this everything in the la more than anything in the last few years. This is the Manfrotto Halo. Again, I don't care what you buy, but you should buy this. This thing is a little, a little more on the expensive side for a reflector, but this fits in my back pocket. And this isn't just a reflector. This is a piece of diffusion that I can use as a reflector. This one's been through the, a world of hate with me. You can use it as a reflector or a diffuser panel. So if you've got a sunny day, diffuse the sun, shoot nice and clean. You got that hard light, refine it with with the reflector and stuff like, oh, <laughs> I'm doing a great job. This thing has been around the world with me, so give it, some, give, give it a little bit of a break. What, oh, there we go. Reflect, refine, diffuse, clean out. <laughs> You're all right, I got you. Look, I've only killed one model. All right, so, yeah, it takes a little time to build. This is the deflector skin, so it's a two-stop diffuser, but it's also got these reflective bands on the other side. So it can be a white bounce if I want, a white diffuser if I want, and a soft silver reflector if I want, all on the fly, and it's not floppy, which means I can hold it myself, because I hate everybody, I never use assistance, I'm always by myself, so that's how I shoot. Did I use this with you? No? The other thing it has is a quarter 20 screw on it. You can either thread it through the 3 8 on a, on a knuckle, or you can thread it onto something, and that's what I'm gonna do. If I can remember where I put it. Everybody with me? Yes. I'm missing an arm. Oh, it's sitting over there. Oh my God. Any, oh no, so no questions so far. Yeah, I am Doc Doc with all these arms. Thank you very much. I love arms, and they're also another thing that makes me love speed lights so much. I can use an articulating arm because speed lights are light enough to put on there. I can put it wherever I want and then freeze it in place, right? This is an, uh, an Avenger D244 arm. It's a legendary arm in this industry. I'm gonna use it, but I'm gonna use it not for a light. I'm gonna make a diffuser sandwich here, right? We're gonna bounce a light into that board through this diffuser, down a set of stairs, over the pool, nothing but net. Oh, you guys suck. <laughs> you guys suck. I should not have put this on like this. Let me tighten this up. I should have set this up way, way in advance. Shut up. <laughs> I can't wait till you do a demo up here, Fernando. Good luck with that. Oh, of course, this is where I die. This is where I die. This is where I'm gonna, oh, this is spinning. No, get closer, Akiva, please. <laughs> 
You know why? Because I, I, I need to take this off. I doubt Seth even owns a tree. This is why I keep a multi-tool on me. What's up? I'm going to try it one more time and make a complete fool out of myself while 47 eyes are staring at me. It's all right. This is a quarter to quarter adapter that comes with the reflector. So you don't have to worry about it. So it goes into quarter 20 and then this goes into this. And you can do this on a tripod. You can do this on gorilla pods, whatever has a quarter 20, it's light enough to handle it. Okay. So now I got it this arm into a super clamp. <laughs> I'm making a total mess. And I'm going to just grip it into this. Now you can grip this onto whatever you got, right? I mean, I might even grip it onto here one day, but right now this is pretty good. So now I've got a light getting bigger, already diffused, filling this more diffused. This might even get that background to light up a little bit. In fact, I'm going to give myself a little bit of space here. Hang on. Ugh. I haven't done this demo in a long time, and uh, it's showing. <laughs> so, all right, I just want to put on this modeling light and see what's up. And then what I usually do is I flash a few times, and like you watch for the flash, all right? Modeling lights will eat up a lot of... Um, battery life, so just be careful on that. Let's do a T-tail exposure and see what we get. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so pretty soft, pretty soft. I think, oh, you know what? I'm gonna give it some more light. And I'm going to, did this fire again? No, okay. I'm gonna give it a little bit more light because I think it could use it. Just so you know, we're already maxing out the strobe here because we're probably losing a stop on the bounce. Two, going through the diffuser, already ate up three spots, which means the max power I'm really hitting is seven, right? So we were already shooting at like eight before, remember? So I'm losing that. I can open up a little bit, five, six, give it a little more power. Look at how clean that is, right? Wait, it gets better. Because I threw a piece of poster, it's so convenient. It's just like right here, guys. Don't you have poster board everywhere you go like I do? One of the best things about poster board, though, it's also rigid, right? So she doesn't have to hold anything. I'm going to put it in there, chin down a little bit, and then turn to me a little more. Yeah, beautiful. Let's get that a little, little cleaner. Beautiful. 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 That's one light, guys. And that's the power of a speed light. <laughs> look, look at, look at, look at, look at, uh, 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 uh. Ah. Ah. That's clean. I don't care. That's clean, son. How, you, how many guys like that? All right, cool. God damn. And we started here with the same light. So what do we really do? We applied principles. Did I run over there and buy anything yet? No, but go buy stuff. And <laughs> we knew what we were trying to get out of it. Big and soft. Gradation not hard light. We weren't looking for hard light, but we didn't get it because look, there is no real sparkle happening. But if I look at Ashley here, there's, there's glitter there. We sacrificed that, which I think was a good, good sacrifice, right? Also, look at her skin tone. She's alive on the right. You got that dead doll thing on the left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are good at that. Everybody feel me? All right, I just want to see. Do me a favor, look straight at me, straight, straight at me. Let's see what happens when we give it a little bit more of a harder hit, okay? When you're using silver reflectors, remember, it, it, you can't just put it anywhere. It has a direction. It's hitting and going somewhere. So something like this is going to help me out. But I can really see, yeah. Turn straight to me. Yeah, beautiful. I just want to see a lot, yeah, and you can actually see how it just hits harder, subtly. So if you're trying to mix that kind of feel of getting a little bit more of that kick, but keeping the gradation, use the fill light to be a specular highlight. Let that reflect off of whatever will be specular. Feel me? Any questions? Really?
okay? What if you would like to darken the background? If I want to darken the background, mm -hmm. that's where you're going to run into some problems here where I'd have to spa space myself out. You're going to want, if you want that background to go darker, you're going to have to get them farther away, which is a zone, right? So if this is zone one and we're shooting at five, six here, this might be F4. But if I was shooting here at five, six, this is going to turn into two, one, eight easily. It starts going darker. That's ratio, right? Ooh, you know what I want to do since I got an actual good crowd? Maybe we'll do that thing I did at imaging and we'll get you guys to be a background. Don't sound too excited. Stop. Lady, you're causing a scene. You're scaring the kids in the back. God, you guys are killing me, man. Any other questions before I get forward? Yeah. The white balance, I'm, so I keep my white balance at 5,000K all the time. Um, that way I'm kind of knowing where I'm at. I think a lot of camera brands calibrate to be warmer because they think people should look warmer. And I shoot dead things a lot, and I like the, <laughs> I, I honestly think I like a more neutral standpoint. If I want to go warmer, I can go warmer. But the real thing is that whatever I'm shooting my light through usually makes it warmer anyway. So this diffuser actually does add a little bit of warmth. So if I did set it to what they call daylight, well, let's just do it. So I'm going to put it onto daylight just to give you guys an idea. This is, this is why it's worth going to live demos. You get what I'm saying? No, I don't put on flash. I'm going to tell you why. I hate flash white balance with a passion. Every single brand that's going to give you flash white balance is calibrating it for their brand strobes. And a lot of times, a flash is referring to a smaller square-headed speed light which shoots bluer. And you're going to watch everything go really yellow really quick. And I'm sure some of you have encountered this plenty of times when you're doing it outside as a fill light and you're going, why is the sidewalk green now? Why is everything sickly yellow? Because they're actually engineering it for their light, period. I hate it. I hate it. I think it's a, I think it's a lie from the industry, and you guys shouldn't fall for it. It really is, though. It really is. It's like you have to realize that these brands aren't trying to play nice with everything. They want you in their systems, right? And what drives me crazier is why don't you just balance the light? Why do I have to have my ambient light go weird? Don't, uh, 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 whatever. What was I doing? I don't know what I was doing. Daylight. Daylight, Daylight yes, because my man wants to see it. All right, so we're going to dial this up. Thank you very much, guys. And you'll see it's slightly warmer. Um, okay, you. Yeah. Whoa, that was 24 millimeter. Nice job, Seth. Jesus. All right. You see how it just got a little warmer? Let me go like this. You can see it, right? And that's only 600 degrees. But to me, I'm looking at her, I feel like 5,000 is more of a neutral point and that's where I always shoot. And I also have to shoot commercial makeup where it has to be accurate. And I always find it to be more accurate when I cool down the sensor on any camera. I don't know what it is. I don't know if my eyes are just warm you know, I definitely have a dark eye. I see things darker. I definitely know that for a fact. All right. Um, let's do something that might help you guys. So let's change out to something traditional like a small softbox. When you guys are shooting something like volume headshots, uh, like you, you're going to a corporate portrait thing, you're going to an event thing, because you have multiple, multiple uh, points of light, you can set up zones, right? Remember how we talked about that background going dark? Well, now I want it to go dark, and I'm going to show you guys why. Any questions while I set this up awkwardly? <laughs> Chat room? Read me the question because it's gone. Seth, don't forget, try some alternative. Can we? Do specular and do what? Diffused. Specular and diffused. Okay. So what's the difference between specular and diffused? Specular is literally the reflection of our light source reflecting off of somebody or some, so our subject, period. So if you're shooting someone and they're, they got shiny skin going on, you're doing that Sports Illustrated dumb stuff, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, it's not dumb. Uh, if you're doing that Sports Illustrated stuff and you're getting some like really specular highlights, you might want that to show that. But if you don't, diffusing it, breaking that light so it misses, light works is, is absolutely predictable. It comes in an angle and it leaves at the opposite angle. So if we know that and you take the light and don't give it an angle, it just sprays. 
it has, it's reflecting in all sorts of directions. Therefore, we get no specular highlight, like glasses, right? Or, or oily on the forehead, you know? There's some people putting modifiers out there that claim there's no specular highlight, but the second they put any sort of diffuser in front of it, the diffuser becomes the light source, and that's what's reflecting off of the skin. It's madness. I'm not getting into this. I'm not getting into it. I'm going to start a war for no reason. Right. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to use this stool. I'm going to put this over here. You want to do me a favor and stand? <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're going, to st we're going to... Ashley's had it too easy for too long. I'm going to take this out of here. Oh, my gosh. I'm building a clubhouse, clearly. So she sits down. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We love Ashley. Now I want you, like, right here. We love Ashley. So I'm going to use this Profoto 1.3 1 by 1.3. 1 1 uh, I, I really do like this size box for a couple reasons. One, I like that it's... Actually, is this the one I want to use? Yeah, fuck. So I like this for a couple reasons. One, it's a small box which lets me sculpt. When we have small boxes that are closer to the subject, it means it falls to shadow faster. The closer my, my light is to my subject, the faster it'll fall off the shadow. Inverse square, right? If we're exposing for here, and the light's right here, then this is going to go to shadow pretty quick. If we're doing, this is 5, 6, this might be F1. You know, so farther away, we start making that zone bigger. And then 5, 6, 5, 4, it starts showing more, right? So I like small boxes uh, for a lot of reasons. One, they're, they're super easy to, to carry around. They don't eat up a lot of light because you're not filling up a five foot octa. And you're really making that shot your shot instead of like a giant light and go, yeah, right? Like, like you just shoot a giant light and you go, yeah, that's, that's the light, you know? Like, no, you really are sculpting and shaping. And I think um, styles are dictated by those choices, right? So that's kind of always been my style. We're gonna mount this, this guy right here. I'm gonna close it up. So while this is a foot, if it's a little farther away from Ashley, it'll be a little smaller, right? And that's when we start getting that harder look, but super diffused. Less specular highlight, a little bit more shape to those shadows, right? What's a key light? What's a key light? Come on, photographers. What? Main light. Who said main light? You're wrong. The light that the light defines that the, shoe. the shadows. Come on. All right, I know everybody says it's the main light, and I'm sure all those classes you paid $200 a video for are really great. But I'm telling you right now, and I will go to war with anybody in this industry, your key light is the light that shapes your subject. How can it be a main light if I can have multiple key lights in a frame? If I have three people, I can key light all of them separately. You're shaping that subject with the size, the type of modifier, the distance, how much it spreads, all sorts of a grid, no grid, contrast, super diffused, hard, and then you're refining those shadows, the density of those shadows with the fill light, which the closer I hold the board to Ashley, the more we fill in those shadows, the farther we hold them away, the more deep uh, density we get in those shadows. But she's still going to be shaped by what? Key light. Thank you. Everyone say key light. Make me feel better. Key light. Key light. Key light. <laughs> what are you voguing to me? What is this? Should I steal third? Go wide on the camera. Three. Uh, three. Does that work? Sorry, guys. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm in 40 places at once. I'm dying here. You know, if I didn't have Ashley, I don't know what I'd be doing. All right. You ready, kid? All right. You know what? Maybe I should throw this on an articulating arm. Let's do that. Oh, I have one right here. It's so convenient. So convenient. Uh, this is a Matthews uh, Noga arm. It's another type of articulating arm that I like to use. I'm going to use this because I can literally put this box exactly where we want to go by inches. I really put this thread on here like crazy. Okay. Let's take this off. Oh, let's do this. Because I'm going to show you guys small strobe. We might as well make it... A, you know, a, the reason we use small strobe. Gotta get in here you got to get in here and drive? What do you... Oh, come on. Am I doing that bad? No. Just 
Tell me I'm a failure. Go ahead. Tell me. Tell me. Listen, Dad. <laughs> I wish my dad. You know how funny this would be. My dad was here with his Velcro shoes. All right. Let's get, let's do this. So really quick, you guys can see how much flexibility you have to just put it where you need, right? And when I say it's a small light and I can really define it, imagine a strip light. Imagine something narrow and you're just like this. I don't like the Photoshop. I don't like to edit. I light the way I want a shot. And this is how I, I'm meticulous. I'll drive people crazy, but we get there, you know? All right, let me get you up. We're gonna put a sandbag on what? What part of the C stand? I love how everyone has a different name for this. It's high, it's the high leg, the tall leg. All right. I'm, I'm spending more time just making room for myself. And you know what's crazy? We gained three feet from the old space here. So like imagine what the old demos were like. All right, you, oh, I forgot how tiny you are. <laughs> I forgot. All right, you all right? Okay, so come to me over here. Yep, let me get this out of here. I might have to break this down and take a minute to break it down. Any questions so far? Are we good? Okay, so let's get a shot of Ashley. All right, step over here. Turn this way for me. Yeah, beautiful. All right, we're going to get a baseline, so we're going to go back to TTL just to get exposure on this and see what it's doing. Here, we really can play with aperture here. We can actually close down more because now we're making whatever light we want. If I close down aperture, that's going to give me more depth of field, which might be better for more, something like corporate portraits. They don't want to see a bunch of 1.2 shots that's great on Instagram. They want a wall of yearbook photos that let people know who's who and what guy wearing that tie and the double chin is the guy, right? So let's just... <laughs> Nothing else is on, right? Okay. All right. I am running out of room again. I know, I know. Uh, all right. Beautiful right there. Let's take a look. All right. TTL is a little hot on that one, so I'm going to dial it back. Oh, my white balance. Thank you. Someone had my back. <laughs> Let's take a look. Tell like that again. Yeah, beautiful. Chin up a little more. Beautiful. Let's take a look. Very nice. Really nice. But you see how much we lost that background, which is actually kind of nice. And we can clean this up with a quick reflector of whatever we want, whatever. Choose your poison, right? Nice and just, she sculpted. We got a clean portrait. Her. Her lip is nice and dimensional. We see mm, that eye nice and clean. But now because I have multiple strobes, I can do things, right? Like light the background. So I can easily put a neutral light back there in a different group and another light back there on a gel with a different group and get a dark background, a graded background, and a colored background just by changing my groups shot by shot. And you're going to give every person three looks before they walk away in, in five minutes. Feel me? You guys want to do that? Yes. Okay. Before that, uh, Patrick is asking, what's the difference between white balance on Capture One and on camera? The difference between white balance on, cap on Capture One instead of in camera. I'll break that down for you. Okay, okay. <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> I thought I could do this on my own today, and I'm failing. Um, the difference between white balance in camera and on, uh, as opposed to in Capture One is when you're shooting in the camera, it's to file. Capture One, you're going to have to, you're adjusting the, you're adjusting after the fact and exporting to that. So you actually have the original and the adjustment later on. You always want to kind of have the best possible original you can to then alter. So that's my philosophy on it. But if you're shooting raw, you kind of can shoot whatever white balance and kind of get to a place. But if you want to spend more time editing and annoying your life and make them all match in a set, mwah, I have no idea. Oh, am I looking at the right camera? I don't even know anymore. What was I doing? Right, the background. All right, come back where I got you. So I'm gonna throw this high-tech piece of equipment right here, and I'm gonna throw a speed light on there, and I'm gonna put it in a different group. That's group A, so we're gonna make this group B. And what's cool about this is, we can kind of guess where we wanna put that power. What are you doing? Did you move my light? No, of course not. 
<laughs> if that's 7.4 on that and we're two feet, three feet from her, if I'm three feet from here, I know that I'm in the same ballpark if I take away the softbox factor. Remember, the softbox eats up a, a stop or two, right? So it's 7.4. That light's really a probably like 6.4. So I can actually start off about here and get an idea for what we're looking at. What could go wrong, you ask? Everything. It's a live demo, and I have no plan. I got two guys jumping in to save my life. So let's just do this. I'm going to go into B, and I'm going to change it to about 6.4. And let's take a look. Let me just make sure we were good. The farther this is from the backdrop, the more it's going to cover. The closer it is to Ashley. The closer it is to the backdrop, the more of a gradation, smaller effect we're going to have. I kind of want to do this, but if I move it, what did I just lose? Power, power, right? All right. I'll even do a cleanup job and I'll zoom my lens. Dude, this is. Now I remember why. Wait, do you guys really want event space? Because I'm good. Like, I mean, I'm. <laughs> so now we have a light background and a dark background option just by groups. Now all I got to do is turn that group on and off. I turn it off again. And we're back to that look, right? So they have options. If you give a client more options when they, more than what they paid for, you think you're getting hired again? Yeah, I know, right? This is New York. We, we, you know, we exploit things. But wait, Seth, you said there'd be another light. I know, I know. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. It's, uh, these people are just animals, you know? So let's say I take uh, that. I knew I set it up. And uh, let's say I take, I don't know, what do I got in here? Uh, did you say full CTO? I heard it. I heard you guys wanted full CTO. Full CTO. Full CTO. Oh my God, why, am I, why can't I find any of my gels now? Oh, oh, did you guys say peacock blue? And rose pink. All right, I'll let you guys even choose this one. Rose pink or what do you, actually, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want for a background? I don't know. Here, look at the audience. Which one do you want? Rose pink. Pink? Okay, so we're going to go pink. I'm going to forget that's in my pocket. And my laundry, the, the lady that does my laundry is going to be like, Seth. <laughs> she finds tools and pocket knives all the time and she's always like <laughs> like look I live dangerous so if I put it within the same distance I already know my power to some degree but there's a there's a catch to this the gel gel eats up that gel is pretty faint meaning it's not um, dense so it's not gonna eat up that much light I'm also gonna put this into a different group I'm gonna go into group C so a neutral light B and see over here because I want to be able to turn them on and off to activate what I'm doing each time, right? So let's do C. Oh, man. <laughs> I totally remember why we got rid of this space. <laughs> no, I love you guys. I do. I do. And I appreciate you coming out. I am just, this shirt is going in the garbage as soon as I get home. I'll tell you that. All right. Let's put on the modeling light. Also, just a quick tip. This is also dependent on my lens. A wider lens, we're not compressing the space. And all you nerds are going to jump down my throat about this not being compressive. I get it. Shut up. I'm doing a demo. It's, it's a perspective point, but we're standing in the same perspective, then changing the lens so we will get a different look. That background is going to shove itself against Ashley, and that color will fill more. If I'm shooting wider, it'll, get a, it'll become smaller of a spread. So I'm cheating my brains out again with an 85. So if you're ever trying to get that light to cover more or hide more of that background and get just a part of it to show up, zoom. Get, it, get some focal length in there, okay? Whew, I feel like last time I shot with you, I was, I was in the same boat, right? That was a tough one that day. All right. Pink, pink strobe on the background, neutral light on the background, and I'm stacking them so they're close in the same area, right? So we're not changing the pattern. You could, you might want to show like, you know, you're doing something cool, knock yourselves out. All right, where was I? I'm going to turn off group B, which is that back neutral light. I'm going to turn on group C. And I know that that group is going to eat up some light. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it like three, three quarters of a stop, just, just to be safe. 
because it's also not going on stark white. It's going on gray. All right. Oh, this better be a good shot. Now I talked it up so hard. All right, you ready? All right. So with Ashley, I gave her a dark background, a neutral. Could even make that a gradation if we make the light lower in, like I can put it on the ground. And all I'm doing is standing on place, shoot, turn off group, shoot, turn off group. And you, she just walked out of there with three looks, right? And you do that for a company of people that go, we want this for our website, this for our lobby, and this for our social. They just got three shoots out of you for one day. The guy that was trying to get that job's really mad at you, and you're going to get hired again or recommend it, right? Or maybe doing a party. Maybe you can set up six of these and give a different color for each person. That guy's personality is dark and weird. Let's do hard, dark purple. They're kind of steampunk. Throw on a chocolate rusty gel. They're kind of creepy. Neon green. No one's pretty yet. You get that? Because they're not going to be. Um, everyone with me? Yes, sir. Useful, yeah? Yes, sir. You all right, Teresa? You know, can I go one demo without another photographer getting mentioned? Can I do that? Am I not enough for you people? I'm dying over here. All right, so I wanted to do a, a that is a nice practical shot. The double diffusion with one light is practical. I could, so we got, I'm going to give you guys a choose your adventure on this one, and I'm hoping to choose one of the other. We could give you guys a white background for a nice commercial look with two lights. Stop shaking your head, Steve. Or we could do a cool shot with all you guys as participants. Cool shot. Cool shot. Cool shot raise your hands. Thank God. All right. <laughs> all right. Come over here. Uh, quick question. Yeah. Is gray background good for gelled lights? Is gray background good for gelled lights? Gray backgrounds are great for everything. Um, they're neutral, right? They're not going to be a color theory nightmare where you're shooting a red light on a green background and canceling and all this other stuff. Gray is a neutral palette. When people get caught up in... I watched them sit here at Adorama, going through every gray paper, sniffing it, rubbing it on their face, they're looking at everything. It's really about whether it's warm or cool and how dark you really want to go. Notice how I didn't say how light, because you can always make it lighter. Making it darker in a small space is harder, because look, we actually had that problem. This background wasn't dark when we shot with Ashley, because she's so close to it. But if I start out with thunder gray instead of fashion gray, we're already getting that dark tone. But then I can throw a light on it. So I'm a fan of cooler tone grays than warmer tones. So I like focus grays, personally one of my favorite. This is fashion gray. I think you and me were shooting on stone or slate gray for a million years. Um, but really that's what you're gonna look at when you're buying gray paper. I don't know what it is with the fascination of grays with everybody. I, I, it's amazing. I almost wanna do just like a vlog of like 10 hours of people buying gray paper. What would you call it? Shades of gray. I can't hear you, boss. I said I think it's because it's general and neutral. It's general and neutral, but there's such a massive amount of tones for gray. You're not going to find a 1,000 blues or greens, but you'll find that many gray. And I think it's really about how you're going to use it. So the, it's, it's very versatile. In fact, Dan Norton, that guy right in front of you, does an amazing demo called Infinite Looks on a Gray Background, which he's going to do eventually again. Uh, but it is available on Adorama TV. It's amazing. And it's really all about what we were doing, zone system, okay? I'm going to do this shot with you guys. <sighs> I did this at Imaging USA and everywhere else because it's a cool shot. And it's the only thing I can, time I can do it is when I have a crowd of people. So let me get you over. Face you. Yeah, face me. Uh, yeah, right there's good. So, ah. Uh, one of the cool things that I, th actually not one of the cool things, one of the things you should just always keep in mind about speed lights is you're always going to be cheating your brains out, right? You're already going into it with less power, with something that's not covering as much, that's not doing bigger modifiers, got it. So what are you gonna look around for? Your environment, what you can use, right? Well, I got a bunch of people behind me and now you're gonna work, all right? All right, so we're gonna key light, same way we were doing it, why not? You know what I wanna do? I have to do this. I'm sorry, I have to do this. Dan, this is in honor of the, of the event space. So the old event space was built by Dan. Watch your book, Watch out. And Dan had the 
definitive beauty dish with two dents in it and a weird square of brown gaff tape that we still don't know where it came from. And it's a two inch roll. So that means someone bought a whole roll of like $80 gaff tape of the ugliest gaff tape. It's not like micro, I don't know where it came from, but he started that event space with his beauty dish and we all used it and beat it up. And now we're starting again. Well, I'm, now we're gonna be using my beauty dish so we can do the new era, okay guys? So this is a pro photo, soft silver. I love this beauty dish so much. Although it's not gonna look as good because it doesn't have the two dents. And I'm, I'm, I was like, man, I should dent this thing, but that, I can't do it yet. I want it to be natural, you know? So, I'm, oh. And this is something you could not do years ago with a speed light. There was no way to mount a beauty dish like this. Me and Dan used to go to Home Depot and weld and glue and staple things together, and they'd last for that shoot. Now, <laughs> like, if you complain in this era, I hate you so much, and I just want you to go home. I just want you to go home. If you knew what we had to do back then just to do that, do you remember this, Dan? God, it was a nightmare. All right, you. Also, notice how the articulating arm still works with this type of modifier still, right? All right, so I'm gonna light you with a nice, pretty hard light. We're gonna get a TTL exposure on you. Here, I'm gonna be starting, I'm actually gonna be looking at my ambient light because I'm shooting into a, an area that's lit. No voice tomorrow. Gone. Gone. It's all right, it's just like my dreams. <laughs> It's all right, I don't have a mic on right now. Don't tell these people. <laughs> gonna go into TTL because I changed everything. Distance, modifier. We gotta go back to zero here. But I also need to check out my, my light. So if I go back to here and I go into my tether and I go into camera and I click this camera, you got, oh wow, that's the smallest preview on earth. On, on my Nikon, I have a button that kills my strobe so I can actually see what the ambient looks like. We're gonna open up all the way. And we're not really getting that much, right? So what I can do here is slow my shutter and get a little bit more of it in there. I can do, let's see, I kinda like that, cause I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna get into. And some of you know exactly what I'm about to do, cause imaging was a lit demo, son. I'm gonna make it a lot easier on me. I'm gonna have her hold this, cause I just don't wanna deal with it. All right. Take a shot. Let's take a look. I know, I know, I know, stop. Yeah, my TTL's shooting hot today, I don't know why. I'm gonna take off, put it up. I'm gonna take off uh, about a half a stop. Tilt like this for me? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, god damn. Yeah. Now, because I'm gonna use my environment to make something cool happen, Everybody take out your phones, put on your flashlights. If you're in the back, hold them high. If you're in the front, hold them lower. And everybody point them straight at me. Put them up as high, as, like uh, on the power as much as you can. Look at that, look at all these people trying to find their flashlight. <laughs> Come on, boobies. <laughs> Come on. Come on. No, I need you in there. I need you in there. <laughs> So we went from boring to something with a little bit in there, right? Something simple. So let's say you're out there shooting and you see a lit window with some crazy stuff in it. You, you move them, move your freaking subjects. I, I, I mean, you know what? Can we get them bunched? Like pull them up and kind of bunch them up. There we go. Stay, stay, stay because I need a thumbnail for my next one. <laughs> oh. There we go. You know what though, this could get a little weirder though. I'm shooting it at four. Not the most soft background, right? I have a 1.285 millimeter lens. Do you guys want to do this at 1.2 and make it blitzed? Yeah, sure. you go, All uh, of Instagram yeah. wants that to happen. <laughs> She's nuts, this one over here, this, this crazy. Any questions while I'm doing this? Any questions? So this is a Nikon 85 millimeter 1.2. You should all watch my video on Adorama TV with this, with this lens. It was bananas awesome. I know Molly knows this lens very well. 
She's in the audience. 1.2 is going to let in a lot of light. But remember, I slowed my shutter down to 80th of a second. That's pretty slow compared to where I was at 200th. So what am I doing? Well, I'm going to open up to 1.2, get that blur of all your lights, which will also make them bigger. Softer focus, less depth of field makes them bigger, not just softer, right? Now, You you guys talk, you guys talk all you hey it's not the you know man I hate you Fernando wow watch this I'm gonna show you guys the real time exposure at an 80th of a second so this is 1.2 look at me Ashley this is 1.2 at an 80th of a second there's like no difference that's how much we let light, light, light in I can speed up to a 200th and that looks kind of nice so let's hold that up for me. Everybody get the, what, did you guys put your lights away? Did I put any lights away? Did I put any lights away? Come on. Everybody up. <laughs> I've got 5% battery, come on. <laughs> That's a you problem. Oh, why couldn't you guys say something? What just happened here? What just happened here? I didn't change my, my strobe. I kept it on the same power for F4. Oh, <laughs> pop your lights. <laughs> now I'm going to take it off of auto. I'm going to dial it back by a third because it doesn't know what I'm trying to shoot, right? Take a look. I'm going to dial it down. All right, put that right. And then, yeah, that's it. Beautiful. All right, guys, lights. Come on. He lights like right here. Come on. Over here, where are you? Right there. a boy, look at these people. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, go for it, Ashley, do it. Do it, live your life, live your truth. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that background, one light. One light, but we're exploiting what's around us, right? Now, if you notice, these lights look a little cat's eye. It's wide open. If I close down to like one four, now we're going to use the aperture to shape those lights. I know I'm exploiting this because I'm tired and I just have this set up. So let's go. Everybody's in this. If I go down, you all go down. Everybody lights up. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. See, I don't like when you put your head up too much. Sorry. Yeah, but look. Look how much I lose of your face. Watch. Yeah. So you see your jawline right here? Watch. Watch how much I lose of you. Mm -hmm. We don't need, when you start doing that, you flatten out your face. Here, I get all the ash. All the ash. Man. I mean, looks pretty good, right? You guys, do you guys like this shot? Yeah. All right, none of you getting credits. <laughs> I want to get it a little wider, if you guys don't mind. I really do need a thumbnail for the next one, so I really do need it. Come on, everybody up. Come on, stop being lazy. I need lights lower in the front. Right here, right here, Arthur. Up, 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 right. Come on, up, up, up. Arthur, up, Arthur, up. Over this way. There we go. Look at these people. It's like fireflies descending on this princess. Look at this. Meow, meow. Chin down, meow. Stay like that. Beautiful. Chin up a little bit. Until like this. Yeah, be that's it. Beautiful. She's got it. She's got it. Keep, wait, hold on. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh yeah, look at you. Oh, so amazing, amazing. Oh, look at that punum, there we go. There we go. You gotta break the model, you know what I mean? Look at, I can watch you in succession breaking. Beautiful, look at that. One light, one light. We didn't go, oh, we don't have a lot of power. I didn't look at this space and go, how can I light everything? We looked at it and said, what's the something in this environment I can use to make this shot worthwhile. Otherwise, hold that up for me. That's what this place looks like. F2. <laughs> She's from Nikon. Uh, I know <laughs> There's been, a, uh, there's been a request to shoot at F2. F2. Oh, F2, all right. F2, all right. 
Let me just get a baseline for the strobe. That's auto. I'm going to dial it back. Do I, is group C on somewhere? Am I? All right. All right. Sorry, guys. You're going to work a little harder. Up, 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 up. All the lights. All the lights. I want you to guys to go missing tomorrow because your phones are dead. All right. Beautiful. Turn this way. Yeah, beautiful. Turn this way for me. Yep, tilt like this. This way, this way. Turn your head this way, and then chin up a little bit. And then turn to me a little bit. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. How much time do I got? Uh, five minutes. Five minutes? You guys want to do a white background in five minutes? Yeah, yeah I know you do. Let's go. <laughs> oh. All right. So this is a three-foot Octa. Guess what? This also fits in carry-on luggage. How do I know this? Because I carry it on luggage. This, <laughs> this, is where, this one you're going to have to cheat a little bit because three feet is only so big, right? But three feet around Ashley with a light in it, if I'm not using it as an exposure, but rather using it as to get a white neutral background, will give me that look really quickly. Am I doing full body? No. Am I gonna get a white commercial look headshot? Yes, because I said so. All right, let's go, oh, I have one right here. How, can, how convenient, I have a light right here with pink on it. Also, you could gel the light, and you can make the background whatever color you want. I'm not saying that just because I have a gel on it. Any questions so far? Are we good? Yeah. We're all good. No questions. I have a question about white, uh, about, um, TX. about what? TX rather than white balance, or just the white balance? So if you like a more neutral, fine balance for the white balance, do you care about your tint? Do you adjust your oh, balance? tint. I was like, what is this Sorry, word they're balance. saying? Yeah. What is this word? Yeah, I absolutely care about tint. And I'll tell you, it's really funny. We shoot on the balcony at my studio, and my balcony has this greenish yellow brick all over it, and it reflects green like crazy. So in that point, yeah, I care about throwing some magenta in there to neutralize it. Um, I think that tint is one of these things that are way easier to, to, to miss than traditional um, blue, and, uh, blue and orange. But it, once you look at skin tones, it's, it's one of those things that, the hell just happened here? There we go. All right. It's one of those things that just being off a few points will throw off everything. While blue and warm, it, it takes like a thousand degrees for you to start realizing. So yeah, I'm a big believer in tint. I'm also a color psychotic mess, you know? I like my zombie blood to be a proper tint of brown. Thank you. Um, there's a <laughs> Actually, what did I shoot for you? It was like an asteroid head. Oh, yeah. You know that's still in my, my, uh, my, um, that's still on my screensaver. It was a good one. You made a, a, an asteroid headed alien, I remember. It's pretty good. Are you out of here, Steve? Yeah, I love you very much. Listen, man, text me, homie. We got to talk, Holmes. All right. Steve John, uh, Steve Robinson, everybody. All right, let's do this. Oh, my God, I'm running out of space. What just happened to this thing? Okay, all right, let's just push $1,000 boxes around. All right, come over to me here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm not worried about that background anymore, why? Because that background is this, this is my background, right? Let me just, let me just straighten this up a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna get this exposure first before we even set this up. This is key. We're gonna shoot the exposure and take note of how far my light is and what power it's left at from TTL. This is gonna dictate, well, if this is three feet, if I put this light behind her at the same distance, at the same exposure, it gives me a base point. If I start seeing that light burn her away, I can lower it a little bit. Because remember, we're not using it as a light, we're using it as a white point. Feel me? All right, let me just put this on here so I have it. Do I got to do these every month, really? Yeah, okay. Uh, more, don't forget about copy of creators. <sighs> yeah. All right, we're going to stay with the 85. It's a great lens, so why not? All right, let me take a look at you. 
give me this. Let's just see what you look like without this, because this is a death sentence sometimes. There's a light ripping from behind her. What's it gonna hit? Okay, so get it without the reflector first, and then if you see it overexposing, then you have all the room to move back. Fair? All right, let's do this. <sighs> I am getting a ton of pasta and going into a coma. What the hell just happened? What? Started from the beginning, black frame. <laughs> what just happened? I almost made it. There she is. What the hell just happened? <laughs> okay, well, there's our frame. Got it, right? Now, we're going to put in that, that white background because we know that we're at 8.6 8 on this, right? So what I can do is get it in the same... Uh, get in the same... Make sure, obviously, make sure she's framed up in it, right? You're going to want to use what type of lens usually for this? A little longer, right? Stretch that, that lens out a little bit. Don't be afraid, you know? Some of you guys are like, I don't know, man. It's a little too much lens. You're fine. You're fine. All right, so we're going to set this. And the first thing we're going to do is not shoot this strobe. If you're setting up a controlled thing, do yourself a favor. Do it light by light, okay? So I'm going to go into auto. I'm going to turn off. I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm going to take it out of auto. I don't know what group this is anymore. C. We're going to go into C. And we're going to shoot it at the same exposure. We want it to be more than our key light because we want that stark white. But we don't want it too much that's going to burn through and rip around too much or burn her hair away. So let's do this. I can already tell you it's too high because I'm, I'm a jerk trying to get out of this alive. Beautiful. Let's take a look. That's stark white. If I go over here, 255, 255, we're seeing a little bit of her, but we're also not seeing burned away hair. Look, we still got it, right? Cool. Now I just got to turn on my A group. <coughs> a. Commercial white headshot. Clean it up a little bit. Oh, I, look at this. It's so convenient. Oh, See, I got you. Commercial white headshot, two lights, minimal space. They throw you in that broom closet at a corporate space, no problem. No problem. You got three backgrounds, you got a white background, you got a gimmick shot that makes you guys think you went to a demo. All sorts of stuff, right? Yeah, dude. You can see my thumb holding, holding that board. Look at that. Unbelievable. Useful? Yeah. And how long did that take us? Thank you. Holy hell. Play free bird. Play free bird. No shutter drags. No shutter drags. No shutter drags. No shutter drags. Um, okay, listen. We have a space now, and you guys are welcome back here. Five o'clock, usually we're doing these demos. Thursday, two days, the one who started it all will be here, Dan Norton. I don't know where he is in this world at this moment. There he is. <laughs> but he's doing constant lights, which might be better for some of you guys, especially if you're a hybrid shooter that does video. It might be something you're more interested in and get something out of. Uh, September 11th, we're doing a panel with some photographers who are actually there documenting Ground Zero and talking about what it was like in that era and how to have got through an experience like that. Super important. We're New Yorkers. I think it's important, and our side of things, right? And also, uh, what's the, what's the, what did I just book? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, that's 9-11. I know. Oh, I forgot, guys. I got this. Hey, that QR code you guys can scan and go to um, Adderall.com slash events, and they'll show you everything that's going on for the events. I'm sorry. I'm like a little fogged out right now. Uh, but this is our space now. This is our community. This is what we make it, right? So let us know what events you guys want to see, what type of classes you guys want to get into. 
Um, we're really going for it on this one. I mean, if you look around, this space was built to do everything we can think of in here. I just want to thank Ashley for being my model today. She's a good sport, and I, I owe you something usable. I owe you so. But yeah, guys, uh, is there any last questions on this one? Anything in the chat from you guys? God damn. I think we got out of that one alive, Fernando. This time. This time. Okay, question. How uh, terrible it will like if you shoot in 50 millimeter instead of 85? 50 millimeter is great. It's a great lens because it's, it's not putting a stylistic choice to your, to your shot to me, right? Like it is, they say it's like equivalent to your eye. To me, it just feels more organic. So I think your lens choice makes, says a lot about who's supposed to be viewing this image and how. If you have longer lenses, the reason we call those kind of portrait lenses is not just because of the shape facing, but because they're farther away from us and they feel isolated a little bit while connecting. If you're using a 50, it's like they're right there with us. It's like you're right there, you're in it. It's great for like street stuff I find or just that like more casual feeling to it. I really think the 50 is an uh, underutilized lens out there because I think everyone gets into this like, I need long and shallow, but you know, a nifty 50 that's like a 1.8 low cost, you'll be surprised what you guys can get away with on that. And it feels natural. It feels like there's less of an imprint of style and more honesty to it. So like, like when I shoot cinematic portraits, I always tell people if I shoot with a 50, let's say I'm doing a car, a scene where she's in a car, shoot with a 50, I'm sitting there with her. If I shoot with an 85, she's by herself now. So you're giving that viewer that premise. And that's a lot to do with lens choice. It has a lot to do with what you're trying to get across as a feel and a mood because you're either a participant or you're an observer. And that goes for the viewer because you are guiding that viewer to a place. Beauty shots, 50 millimeters, great. It's great. I also look at shapes of skull, set faces. <laughs> <laughs> that too. I also look at shapes of faces and you really start looking at what a lens can do. I was just showing Ashley, I'm gonna show these two shots really quick. So this, this is 10 millimeters apart. 10 millimeters apart. Yeah, so. Figure out, like, sometimes the shape of the face starts to be like smaller and more rounded. Of yeah, exactly. But that can also do with lighting. So if you have lights that fall off faster to shadow, you're narrowing down that face as well, which is kind of what happens with a beauty dish in some cases, depending on the angle. You get that hot point and then goes to black. And then you're really starting to sculpt down that skull, the bone structure, man. Bone structure, bone structure. sorry. <laughs> Halloween's coming up, what do you want? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so lens choice says is, is, is really a big part of your, your uh, viewer's experience, but it also is gonna tell, it's also gonna shape your subject. So that's kind of why it's so important. I think that's why people invest so much in lenses. And people are like, this is my favorite lens. I'm like, why? I'm always shooting something different. That's why I like the 24 to 120, because I'm flying through focal lengths on the fly, and I like to go 24, warp it out, just the eye, screaming, or 120, back up, isolate, tight. You know, And that's why I like zoom lenses so much, and I've been yelled at by pros forever about this thing, uh, this like prime uh, mafia that's out there. Uh, listen, whatever gets you the shot you want to get, doesn't matter how much that lens uh, costs, whether it's ridiculously cheap or sharp, there's lenses that are super soft that people love. <laughs> Very dreamy and Vaseline-y looking, you know, but they're 30 bucks, right? So uh, don't, lens isn't about the quality as much as it is the characteristic, in my opinion. I like my portraits so sharp people cut their eyes on them. I want people to feel like they're right next to them. I want them to be almost uncomfortable. Yo, what's up, man? Long time, welcome back. You almost made it. <laughs> it's pretty good for me, though. Yeah, it's pretty good for you. Ah, this is great. I'm really glad you guys are here, and it does us all a world of good to see you guys show up to these events. Um, we built this hoping you guys would come back. So look, get to know someone in the store. Make a relationship. When they start knowing your shooting style and what you're doing out there, you'd be surprised how much they open up your game to like, have you considered this? Well, this thing exists that'll help you do that. Maury in the back has been lonely for 37 years. He got bar mitzvah in the 40s. He's crying by himself. Go say hi to him. You got Tucker right there with the red hair. I mean, you got Nelson back there. Shoba, you got Will, Marav, you got Joe over there with the hat. Make a, go say what's up to someone and let them know what you're into. You don't have to go, I'm looking for this, I'm trying to buy this. Let them learn what you're trying to do so that you can grow. It's not about selling you something, it's about keeping you guys creating the way you want to. All right? And I mean that. We wouldn't cake up this much footprint in a store in Manhattan. 
this is a thousand dollars a square foot. No, look at this. And you guys are all part of this. I'm not, I would not be up here dying <laughs> if I didn't believe that, all right? So listen, uh, add Adorama events on YouTube so you can stay up if you can't make it. Uh, share this round. Bring somebody with you next time. Go on Eventbrite. Follow Adorama on Eventbrite. And whatever you do, don't look at what you don't have. Look at what you have. Invest in yourself. Don't buy the hype. Okay? It's your shot. No one else's. Okay? All right, guys. My name is Seth Miranda, last ex-witness on all social. Thank you guys so much for everything. And, uh, yeah, this is... Oh, shit. I forgot how to close this out. <laughs>